Can you take the middle, brother? Hey guys, first of all, thank you to Emily Arena. Thank you to our partners at DAZN, to all of our sponsors. Another sold out event for Jake Paul and Amanda Serrano. Four weeks ago, four weeks ago, we put this fight on sale. No press conference. Out of the blue, these two decided they wanted to fight. The reality is, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia didn't sell out. Shakur Stevenson didn't sell out. Jake Paul and Amanda Serrano once again proved that they are the faces of boxing. They didn't have to take this fight. Everything was on the line, and they both came out and showed and proved tonight. So congratulations to you both. Let's go ahead with questions. Jake, was it, was it pretty much the way you thought? I know you thought you would knock him out early, but you did say he was a brawler. You knew he was tough. But in the end, your boxing skills would win out. You knocked him down. So now that you look at it, was it pretty much like you kind of thought? A little bit different. I truly believed I would put him out in the first round. But, man, that guy is tough. He took damage like no one really I've ever seen before. And I knew if I didn't get him out of there in the first round that it would happen later on in the fight. So I was mentally prepared for both. But I just believe in my power so much. I, I put him down in the first round, but he just kept coming. So respect to Mike Perry. That's why he's – the. King of violence, former king of violence. I'm the new king of violence, <laughs> but respect to him. Scotty. So, uh, Nikisa and Jake were both of you, and Amanda. You were, we talked the other day, and you were saying you expected around 15,000. You sold out that quick. Just what are your initial thoughts just after all that? I think just, you know, it shows the draw that Jake has, that Amanda has, and, and the disruptive nature of our company. We ended up with over 17,500, and, you know, Honestly, it's just a testament to the popularity of this man and, and that woman, these two athletes. And, and now they're on to facing Mike Tyson and Katie Taylor in what I believe will be the biggest fight since the Muhammad Ali days. Nothing bigger. Talk about some mistakes that you made in this fight. Can you expound on that just a little bit? Yeah, I'm a perfectionist and I wasn't perfect because he hit me like five times. One was good. One good punch he landed. So I just need to go back to the drawing board so I don't get hit at all. But I think it just had to do with my energy more so than anything else and uh, being able to throw more punches. That's that's what I didn't feel very good in there tonight. But live, you live and you learn. I haven't gone more than one round in a year. So this was great experience. Watch his podcast that he put out this week. This guy was very sick <laughs> until this Wednesday. You can listen to him in the face-to-face -face and people commented online, why does he sound so nasally? He's been sick for a week. He, again, caught something right before the fight. But the entire time he was resolute that he wanted to go through with it. But he's, he's a warrior. He's a tough, 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 tough man, for sure. And, and dropping 38 pounds. In four weeks. In four weeks, when I was going to be a heavyweight. I'm not saying that, that was why, but I, I mean, it might have something to do with it. Jake, talk about adversity. You're always, um, people are always doubting you, but you're always overcoming it. Talk about this. I thrive, man. I love when I'm backed into a corner because there's only one thing to do, and that's fight your way out. And people don't believe in my skill. They said this was a mistake. Mike Perry's going to knock him out. He's going to be the one to end it. Why is Jake Paul doing this? This is dumb, blah, 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 blah. And I sat there at the press conference. And I said it to everyone. They always sit across from me and underestimate me and think they can beat me. But people don't realize my speed, my power. And you heard Mike Perry after the fight, you know, all the praise that he gave me. I don't even think the cameras or the, you know, stream can comprehend the punches and my power and my speed. So when you get in there with me, it's a whole different thing. Eric. Eric, Eric, Eric Jr. Post. Congratulations. Um, two quick ones for you. Number one. Uh, any specific reason that you call out Alex Pajeda? Uh, obviously, UFC contract would be tough to get him out. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I want everybody. I love this sport. And, you know, he's tweeted about wanting to go into boxing. We got him on the FaceTime right there in the ring. And I said, yo, can you get out of your contract? If he can get out of his contract, then let's run it. And so when I asked him that, he had a pause. He, like, looked at his manager. 
you know, these guys aren't their own bosses. So I want all the smoke, but at the end of the day, will Dana let him out? That's too big of a risk if I could embarrass his number one praised fighter right now. But I want all the smoke. I want all the MMA guys, and I've beaten all of them. Who's next? He's the king right now of the UFC, so I want him. I'm going to decapitate him and dethrone him. And just to be clear, right, it was Anthony Joshua that said Pereira should enter the boxing ring. Pereira said, I'm honored. I would love to. Who should I fight? Right. And when we saw that, <laughs> he said, hey, you should fight me. And we said, well, he signed to the UFC. And that was the basis of that discussion. Yeah. One second. Hey, Fred. Yeah, because a great night for you and Amanda. Unfortunately, Ashton wasn't able to get the win tonight. Obviously, in boxing, it's quite normal that uh, if your training partner goes out and loses, it could affect you. Before the fight, did it affect you at all? It, it, honestly, it's definitely shifted the energy mm -hmm. in the locker room. And it was just scary. And... I love that kid. So we, yeah, we, it did affect us and, and we had to kind of, you know, say a quick little prayer for him and then refocus, but it is really weird to, to experience that. Amanda, how did you feel? No, yeah, it was really um, devastated. That's sad to see, you know, a stable mate of ours, um, but we just have to go out there and stay focused and hope um, the best for, for us. And I get extremely nervous when he fights, <laughs> when Jay fights, anyone on the team fights. So, I mean, it's, but this this is the moment that's the most important in H2O's career, right? He's He took a big, big loss tonight, and now he's going to have to internalize that. They've already reached out to us and said they want the rematch in November on Netflix. We're going to let them take some time to think through their next steps. But I have no doubt that he's going to come back stronger, just like Jake did when he took a split decision loss to Tommy Fury and came back and did it bigger and bigger and bigger. H2O is going to do the same thing. One more question. question for you, Jake. We've seen your skills in the boxing ring. I guess now we'll see even more of your skills as a promoter. How do you look to kind of guide Ashton and Andrew and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, he could just look at what I did, you know, and, and just come back stronger, double down. That's a lesson for everyone out there is when you take losses in life, you double down, you go back to the drawing board and you keep going. You only lose when you quit. And that's a Mike Tyson quote. Mm -hmm. Just talked about Tyson. I mean, obviously he's a legend, but considering what you did tonight, should a 53-year-old really be getting in the ring with you, do you think? Yeah, if Tyson wants to get in the ring, I'm down, and he does. So <laughs> here we are. He's one of the baddest men on the planet. And, you know, if he wants that opportunity and that smoke, he's he's the one who is like, let's make this a pro fight. I'm going to end you, and I'm ready for it, and I'm excited for it. And he's a beast. It's Very amazing. dangerous. It's amazing. No matter what would have happened here, somebody would have asked the question of, should this fight really happen? If Jake would have gone to a decision. They would have said, should this fight happen? Can he really beat Mike Tyson? If Jake would have lost. They would have said, thank God he's not fighting Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson would have killed him. He beat Mike Perry. He was an extremely tough man. He's not as tough as Mike Tyson, and he's certainly not as skilled as Mike Tyson in the boxing ring. <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, you don't even no, know. No, he's not. You don't even know his age. Next question. Anybody any, have any questions for Amanda? I was going to say, oh, Amanda, the crowd was electric for you tonight over a year since your last fight. How did that feel just to be back out there and just see, feel that energy? Oh, it's truly amazing. I, get, I feed off of that energy. 50th just, fight. Yeah, my 50th fight, 31st knockout. TKO, 50th fight. Okay. No, super exciting. I, I love um, fighting um, in front of a, a big audience. Thanks to Jake, all, all the big fights. And I just feed off of that. And I just love giving the fans a real good fight. You know, I'll take one to give two hard ones with my punches. So. She talks so much smack. And then you just Jay, smack. There's, there's levels to <laughs> this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there's levels. Puerto Rico flags everywhere. You expect to see that in Dallas? Of course. There's Puerto Ricans everywhere. <laughs> so they'll be there in Dallas 100%. Kevin? Kevin Garcia, a.k.a. the Puerto Rican KKG. This is Fight Hype. Amanda, you just talked about it. Jake's made a statement. She was talking a little bit before the fight, right? And you normally have a really calm demeanor. You don't you don't talk too much. But did that fire you up? Did she get under your skin at all in, in a way that motivated you? Um, not under my skin, under my <laughs> my trainer's skin, Jordan Maldonado. And um, every time that happens, he, I don't know, I feel off of his energy. And he just makes me go out there and he tells me, forget the skills. <laughs> just go out there and go through her. And um, that's what happens. And I remember the last time... Um, um, a girl did that to me, and that fight ended in 58 seconds. So I was just thinking that as well. You know, um, you know, I feel like she was a little disrespectful, but um, I had to ke keep my cool. I'm a professional, and that's what I do. I, I stay calm, I collective, and I go out there and I perform. Do you 
TJ? Well, along the same lines, could you sense like in the first minute of the fight? Yes. I can get her out there. <laughs> Yes, yes, I knew it. After the first couple of punches, I was like, okay, I got it. I'm going to narrow her down, and I'm going to hit her hard. And, yeah, all my punches were hard, and I knew it was going to. When the referee said, um, show me something, Stevie, I just went out, and I said, it's over. First and foremost, I want to say congratulations on both your wins and a fantastic performance for both of you guys. Thank you. I'm a huge fan of your work, Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> said after the fight that your goal is to be the cruiserweight champion in two to two and a half years. How would fighting a guy like Connor who came after you, McGregor who came after you tonight after the fight, or Alex Pereira help you achieve that goal? Yeah, man, anytime I can get into a camp for a big fight and perform under the bright lights to prepare me for tough moments, I'm going to take it. So, you know, there's money fights, there's big fights, there's experience fights. I think tonight was an experience fight. Uh, November is a is a massive, massive fight. And I mean, it's experience going up to heavyweight and being in there with someone who's been doing something, boxing their whole life. So everything is just on the on the path to, to being a cruiserweight champion. And if I can go in there with champions of different leagues, those are the best of the best in the world, and they're going to bring the best out of me. You've seen what he's done to experienced boxers that have a similar record to him, right? So these moments, I think, help prepare him for those more experienced boxers. You saw Chavez Jr. tonight. He looked, he looked pretty good, but he was fighting a guy who was 1-0 in boxing, right? His 1-0 is against an NFL player. And yet that MMA guy was able to hang in there with someone who has 60-plus fights. So it's not easy what he does to these MMA fighters in any way. Jake, Colin working for IFL TV. You told me outside that you hurt your hand a little bit tonight. Can you tell us a bit more about that? And will it affect the Mike Tyson fight? Oh no, I'm I'm good. It just felt worse like in the ring, but right now it's fine. Is that why you were peppering him with all those left hands? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I honestly I couldn't get his timing because he was just weird all over the place. And that's where MMA fighters sometimes are harder to fight than boxers because he was just changing everything every round. There was no like repetitive patterns. He wasn't falling into the same thing. He's just wild and throwing and all of a sudden you back up and then he's leaning back. Then he's swinging from up here. So I just had to use my jab a lot to slow all of that down. And I saw him dwindling as the rounds went on and I just stayed patient which is something we've been working on and normally I just try to go a lot harder and faster but I just waited for the right moment well that jab was amazing thank though. you <laughs> thank you can you talk about how much MVP Jake and the Kisa meant to your career putting you basically on the map and everybody already should have known about you because you're a great boxer I've said it from the very beginning, was the easiest and best decision I ever made to be part of MVP. Jake Nikisa changed my life, my family's life, my team's life, 100%. Um, now I sit here in front of you, a multi-millionaire with a lot more followers on him. <laughs> And a lot more people, a lot more people seeing women's boxing. Women can fight. Women can sell. We can perform and put on a great show. And thanks to these men over here, uh, my trainer Jordan Maldonado, uh, we just, I think this is the dream team. And I'm super happy and proud to be here. Look, we've had our up and downs together just like any family does, but we are family, right? When that scuffle happened yesterday, I saw Jordan rush up onto the stage immediately because his family was under attack. So it's a beautiful partnership. And... This is the greatest female boxer of all time. <laughs> Nobody can dispute that claim. Thank you. Hey, do you believe you're the face of um, Puerto Rican boxing right now? Because ever since Cotto retired, just they're looking for someone. So <laughs> they have it right now. here. They have it. Hell they have yeah, she has for a while, man. I'm she the first undisputed yes. champion. I mean, I believe I am. Um, I, I represent all of Puerto Rico because that's my pride. I, I represent all women, and that's what I, I want to do. Two more. Amanda, do you think you're ready for Katie Taylor? Do you think I'm ready? I, I feel ready. I feel good at this weight. I feel strong. Um, I know Katie Taylor is obviously not Stevie Morgan, but I'm coming in here with a, a more confident um, demeanor, and it's going to be a good a good fight this time. Promise. Eric, last question. Uh, in the spirit of MMA and uh, boxing transitions, would you ever um, entertain a fight with Amanda Nunez, whether it's in the ring or in the cage? Oh, definitely. You know, now if Jake does the stuff, the stuff that he does with the MMA, yes. I mean, I don't mind. I'm a fighter. I love to fight. And if it makes um, women grow bigger in the sport, why not?
Amanda, Amanda is also signed to PFL, as you know. So once again, that would be a promotional challenge given the <laughs> UFC is not willing to do cross promotions, but they certainly would be willing to. Jake, uh, last question. Uh, Carlo with the Face of Boxing News. Two weeks ago, Nate Diaz had a victory win over Jorge Masvidal. We know that you beat him in the past when you guys had your boxing fight. How do you feel him calling you out again and saying that he's going to, you know, kick your ass? He wants payday. <laughs> payday. I know that. <laughs> no, but I want to do it in MMA. And he don't want, he, he, there's too much to risk for him. I don't think he thinks he could actually beat me in MMA. We made the offer and he hasn't accepted it. So Nate any- Diaz, if that, if you want the rematch, we're doing it in MMA. Is there anything special that caught your eye from that fight with Masvidal? Do you watch it? Uh, uh, did, did there, you see anything new special? No. <laughs> just, just a zombie. <laughs> so Mike Perry, Nate Diaz, a zombie. They, they're they going to be in the zombie apocalypse one day. <laughs> just Jake, fucking eating people. Last one. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Jake, just real quick question. As soon as your fight ended, Conor McGregor said Mike Perry was fired from the BKFC. Oh my! Did he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he took shots at you. He called you some some derogative term. Any oh message for Conor God. McGregor? <laughs> hey, that's fucked up that you fired the your BKFC champion. The but face of BKFC. I, I told you that was gonna happen. You, you know, I told you exactly what was gonna happen. He, he was big upping his boy Mike Perry. I said, okay, Conor. Like after I fuck up Mike Perry, then you're next. So Conor's on Twitter all the time he's on his yacht all the time but guess where he's not in the ring fighting me so he can talk all the fuck he wants but the notorious mma is scared of jake joseph paul from disney channel and i put that on my mama thank you everybody thank you to the media for all the support thank you for coming out to tampa in the middle of the summer we love you guys thank you thank you everyone you want it there you go